namo chassa bhagavato arahato asamma sambuddhassa namo chassa bhagavato arahato asamma sambuddhassa namo chassa bhagavato arahato asamma sambuddhassa bodhang dhammang sanghang namasami So welcome to Wat Buddha Dhamma, to our annual New Year retreat. And uh, as usual, it's always good to see lots of uh, familiar faces. Some who live here, some who only come to retreats, <laughs> and a few new faces. And um, just to uh, go over some of the basics of the uh, retreats for our new guest. Um, you've noticed it's just taking the uh, eight precepts, the first five precepts, as some of you would know, is uh, called the, uh, the harmlessness, training in the rules of harmlessness, not killing a living being, not stealing, not taking what's not yours, uh, complete abstinence, mainly sexual activity, not lying, and um, no uh, intoxicating drinks, no drugs. Of course, if you have to take some medication that makes you drowsy, then that's okay. And um, I think most of those rules are pretty uh, self-explanatory. Um, like I said, that, you know, we're offering harmlessness as a gift to all the beings around us, not hurting, not harming any beings, any creatures. That means not uh, killing mosquitoes or flies. Careful when we walk, don't step on the ant, try to kill them intentionally. Um, it's just uh, an awareness that uh, in all beings value their own life and safety. So we offer that to all the beings in the, in the forest who lives here. And the third um, rule is uh, a no intentional sex, sexual activity. We're here not as um, a man or a woman looking for partners. It's not a single spiritual club. This is a monastery. We're here to cultivate stillness and wisdom. To cultivate looking at each other as just a being, not a potential partner, but just a being that is looking to escape the worldly ways, looking to go inward, looking to become more still. So leaving away, leaving all that worldly stuff of uh, trying to impress each other, trying to uh, score a date after the retreat. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the fifth one, the fourth one of not lying. This one should be easy to keep if you keep noble silence. <laughs> right. So remember this is the title of the retreat is the wisdom of stillness. We come here to be still. And stillness is um, has many different levels. Initially, it is the calming of the body. We come, we sit quietly, we don't move the body. And part of the stillness is not moving the mouth. Keep that still as well. When the mouth is not moving, it gives a chance for the mind to start to slow down, to become more still. And uh, as you know, there's Almost 50 of us here, our voice travels around. So when we want to talk, we not only disturb ourselves, we disturb all the people around us, especially in our accommodations. So we really ask people just to uh, pay attention regarding your speech. So as you talk, you have to, but try to keep it to a minimum. 
as also a, a gift to others around us. People you know, have busy weeks, have only a few days to come, to rest before the new year, get ready for an, the challenges of a new year. So we offer the gift of silence to all our friends, colleagues, people who are sharing the next few days together, especially if you're sharing your accommodations with others. Um, just try to be mindful, not only just talking, but as you move around, as you close the door, you enter, you leave the sala, enter, leave uh, your accommodation. So be as quiet as you can. That way, you move through the monastery, you move through the retreat, you move through life not leaving lots of traits, not leaving a trail of things behind you. Just move through quietly. One of the sayings that the enlightened ones do not leave a trace, like a bird who flies through the air, leave any trace behind them. It is the worldly ones that wants to make an impression. The worldly one that wants to express their views and opinions, be known, to be heard. It is the quiet ones that are still. I always tell people, remind them, you have to make a choice between being right or being peaceful. Choose peace. Let the other person be right. Choose peace and stillness. That's what we're here for. It is in peace and stillness that wisdom arises. Not through noise, not through shouting, that we gain wisdom. So that's why noble silence, something that we encourage for the next few days. We live in a world that can be quite noisy at times. So here's an opportunity to experiment, to, to learn to, to live life in a different way. What's it feel like when we walk to a room and not say anything? We can still have goodwill towards each other, of kindness and gentleness. We don't have to break, break down to speech. So that's the the encouragement to um, keep noble silence to uh, Monday after the meal. Um, of course, like I said, if you need to talk, then uh, um, you know you can talk during the work period. You have to ask questions about certain things or clarifications. And then it's also obviously a good time to talk. So that is the uh, uh, the noble silence, and the next topic is the schedule. As most of you have seen, it's posted in the kitchen and in different places. Um, there is the morning chanting at five o'clock. Uh, there is a guided meditation at two in the afternoon. Uh, the interviews happens on Sunday uh, in the bell tower, which is behind there. Uh, so I think it's a 10 minute sessions. And other than that, there is sitting and walking um, periods. And these are obviously encouraged, but if obviously you have a long day, you're not feeling well, then of course you will participate uh, as much as you feel comfortable much as your body and mind um, are ready. Anything else? This is usually the work period in the morning. Anybody, anybody have any questions regarding the schedule? 
And I think um, Annie is the uh, manager. If you have any question, uh, you can come to her or talk to myself uh, after the meal. Okay. Any more questions about the housekeeping roles? Um, we can go. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, just a little housekeeping thing. I think Annie was saying that uh, please uh, stay in the same uh, uh, seat throughout the retreat. Obviously, you can uh, use the chair in the back of the room if uh, the knees are getting sore. Uh, we're trying to keep the same sitting mat on the floor. I think. Do you know where the charging station is? Okay. Okay, so we'll start with the, uh, the Dhamma talk tonight. I think it's mostly, like I said, um, the theme is the wisdom of stillness. And continue with that. You know, we do live in a world that can be noisy at times. The noise of, obviously, the traffic, noise of other people, but sometimes, and then the noise of information age that we live in. We have to process a lot of information, so sometimes the mind uh, moves very quickly. And as we move, we need to digest information, need to relate to people, need to plan, need to analyze. The mind can move quite quickly. And sometimes it's hard to slow down. Sometimes it's hard to relax. So the next few days, hopefully I'm encouraging you just to leave that world behind. Just to come into the present moment. Come into this forest. Just be as much as you can, be with the body, be with the present moment, be what is already here. And hopefully, you now we have a very, very beautiful place, beautiful forest around for you, just to entice you to come into the present moment, to leave the world of your job, your responsibility, just for a few days. Otherwise, you know, your, your responsibility, your job, the family, the plans that you have, obviously it's okay to have them. You can't get away from them. You have a job. You have a family to look after. But it's like carrying a luggage. Your responsibility, you can't put them down. They become very, very heavy. But once you can put them down for every, you know, five or ten minutes, and the luggage of the past, the luggage of the future, it's much lighter and put them up again. So the next few days, just leave the luggages of the past, the luggage of the future, the next, we'll, next year will bring. And just stay in the present moment for a few days. Stay in the here and now and see what that feels like. And once the mind is Relax, refresh, recharge. Then you can pick up your responsibility again. Responsibility of being a, a mom, a dad, a partner, co worker, different things, different roles that we have in the world. If you meet those challenges again, hopefully with a bit of a stillness, a bit of clarity. So it is just to, and one of the ways to do that is just to hopefully to leave your phones um, on flight mode. And stay with the body as much as you can. There are different meditation techniques that we will explain in the next few days. 
encourage people just to do the body sweeping, body awareness, be in the body as much as you can, being aware of the different posture that we hold, the different physical sensations in the body that you're feeling. Another way to be mindful is also do the breathing meditation, being aware of the in-breath, the out-breath, wherever that's clearest, you're exploring that breathing meditation as well. And the last is the um, meditation on friendliness, on acceptance. It's called metta meditation. So those are the three main uh, meditation objects we'll be exploring in the next few days. And obviously if you have your own, you're also welcome to uh, continue with that as well. We find that it's helpful, that it works. What was it? Oh, that's the other one. The, um, there, was, there was the eight precepts. So the five is, is harmless. The last three, obviously, not uh, um, eating in the afternoon, no entertainment, and not sleeping on high luxury bed. As mostly means not to indulge in sleeping uh, unless you're uh, really, really tired. And the last three precepts are what we call the precepts of restraint. Saying earlier, we live in a busy world, so sometimes the mind does move a lot. One way to help to stabilize, to calm it down, is to um, move away from anything that can disturb and distract the mind. And that's the, uh, where the non-entertainment comes from, not listening to music, not watching movies, uh, not playing any musical instruments. It just helps just to ground the mind in the present moment, in the here and now. And there's, obviously there's not a, um, a moral, it's not immoral to eat in the afternoon, obviously. But for in the monastery, during the retreat, it's just a point of practicality. The less we eat, less clean up, the less someone have to cook. And as monks, obviously we don't cook. So it's just to keep things simple. And a lot of times, you know, if you have a full stomach, it's just harder to meditate in the evening. But obviously just to uh, keep your energy up, there are things that you can um, consume in the afternoon that helps uh, with the sitting and walking meditation later in the day. And those will be available, obviously, in the kitchen around 5 o'clock. And that's just, uh, I think, the other small housekeeping um, with 50 people around. So please just make use of the food uh, that is on the table and not to go into the kitchen to prepare your special uh, food. Yeah. And um, as we you know, today is the 29th, a few more days left. As you uh, get older, uh, the New Year retreat seems to come faster and faster every year. We're turning slightly grayer. And, um, but it's always, I find it, it's kind of a, a special time. A time, it is the end of the year, it's always a time to, um, to reflect back to what happened you know, the last years, last 12 months. And hopefully, like you said, you have the next few days, the space, the time, just to process, to hold them, to learn from our experience, and hopefully to move forward with more energy, with more clarity. Sometimes it is good to ask yourself, why am I here? And the, 
things that I'm doing, is that going to lead to my happiness, long-term welfare happiness, or the happiness of the people I know? I think one was the reading I was doing early in the week for my Chanchana Sorrow, is that part of the problem with the world is that many people spend, a lot of people spend their times on what is not an important activity. And they don't spend enough time focused on what is really important in life. And part of being a spiritual seeker is that we're trying to be mindful to ask ourselves, what is really important in life? Am I am I devoting enough time and energy in what are the most important things to do? By living life in the way that when you get to be 90, 80, 90 years old, you look back and you feel that you've led, led a well-lived life, a life that is harmless, a life that is of benefit to yourself and others. That you just have been frittered away, accumulating things, doing things just to distract yourself. But you love a life that had a meaning. And obviously, each and every one of us can only define those meanings for ourselves. But sometimes it's good just for doing these periods of ending and new beginnings to reflect. Because sometimes so much of our life, we just move on to the next thing. What it happens is next things. Next job, next relationship, next monastery, next holiday. Always on to the next thing. We really never kind of process, understand. That's how new beginnings is very it's like sparkly, it's bright, it's shiny, it catches our attention. But as practitioner, we're encouraged just to look at endings, how things end. You know how things end for each and every one of us. How are things going to end? You might live to be 80 years old, might live to be 100. We might have a family with lots of kids. Or we might be single. But we all know how things end six meters in the ground. That's how things end for each and every one of us. Knowing that, we're trying to focus on what will bring meaning to our life. What is the most important thing to do? So we're all gonna end up six feet on the ground. Between now and then, what is the most important thing to do? So hopefully with the, with the stillness, the calmness that we develop in the next few days, we can all get a glimpse of what that is for each and every one of us. To move towards the question of why are we here? And what is the most important thing for us to do? So I offer that for your reflection tonight. <laughs>